Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be doing basically just a little playthrough of my game that I made for the Ludum Dare 46 Game Jam. Of course if you remembered in my previous video I mentioned that I was going to be making a game using DOTS and ECS uh, which are some of the newer technologies to the Unity game engine. Um, and we can take advantage of um, multi-threading on the CPUs and just be able to spawn a bunch of entities within our scene. And you see, I'm kind of using uh, the dots and ECS um, to basically achieve this effect where I'm kind of creating this little globe. You see that it's uh, kind of materializing here. And um, you notice this is actually the main menu. I've created this little function where we can kind of toggle the UI on and off. Um, but basically before I want to get into it, I'd just like to say that I am building up my Discord server right now and I'm going to have that basically be as kind of like a place where uh, a bunch of game developers can come and just help each other um, with some of the things that they're going through, whether that be technical problems in the game or, you know, things um, maybe related to the business aspect of game development or even just kind of mental health and you know staying positive and motivated in general. Um, so definitely go check that out, especially when I have like a whole bunch of uh, ECS there. I know ECS and DOTS are pretty confusing to, especially to learn. Um, so it'd be really nice to have kind of a supportive group of people who you can kind of bounce ideas off and um, just kind of overall share knowledge. I think it's really gonna help us become much better developers because of it. Anyways, if you do wanna play this game out for yourself, I'll leave a link down to the description. Um, it's just on my itch io page and um you know as we uh let's just get into the game here and we can kind of talk a little bit more about uh kind of the game jam and what i was thinking of making so basically here is the game and i can i just kind of start playing and um you maybe kind of figure out what's going on but essentially the uh, theme of the game jam at the beginning there's always a theme that they release and so the theme for this game jam was keep it alive. Now, one thing that I always like to do with these Ludum Dare game jams is I kind of like take like a literal approach off of uh, what the theme's name is. So instead of keep it alive, I thought of keep IT alive. And it kind of makes sense because my, you know, day job, so to speak, um, I am an IT technician. So um, I, I just thought it was kind of funny. It, it kind of blends the both um, both of the worlds of kind of my passions for game development as well as IT. And um, so yeah, this is kind of what I came up with, keep IT alive. And then so after I kind of thought of that idea, I was like, well, what could I what could I kind of make the theme of it as? So I thought of this idea of basically saying keep the Ludum Dare servers alive because um, if you've ever participated in a Ludum Dare game jam, uh, you'll notice that people from all around the world, you know, kind of as you see here, um, especially during the beginning and submission hours of the game jam, um, uh, they pretty much just flood the servers and we just have, you know, a ton of people, um, you know, submitting their games or just going on to see what the theme is and everything like that. Um, so it, it's kind of a joke within the community of uh, that, uh, you know, the Ludum Dare servers are kind of crappy. Um, but anyways, so I, I came up with this game. It's Keep LD Servers Alive is kind of what the, the final title of it. So the idea here is basically these red dots are, you can think of them as like game jam games that people from all around the world are submitting. Um, I've pretty much only been sticking to America right here, but you can, you know, bring these out. And then um, we have these, again, using the ECS and dots from Unity. Uh, data oriented technology stack and entity component system um, to be able to kind of move these entities around. Now it gets kind of interesting. You're not just kind of clicking around, um, but basically you can actually click on the server and we have this whole kind of server upgrade panel. Um, so you'll see that we have the link speed. This is one that we can upgrade here. And you'll see that um, we actually now upgraded to uh, 300 megabits per second. I believe the starting was just a uh, 100 megabits per second. And then you'll notice that when we go here, you'll see now the games are going to the server much, much quicker. All right, so now this is kind of uh, gonna allow us to send games to the server much faster. Uh, one thing you do, you do need to pay attention though is um, if you start sending some games to the server and you click off, they're just gonna snap back to right where they started. So you know, you can't just kind of be going around and collecting them like this and everything. Uh, you really gotta you gotta click and then wait for them to actually reach the server. So that's kind of like one of the reasons um, why the link speed upgrade is important um, is because you know once it hits the server, then you can kind of move on to getting some other ones. 
So now you'll notice here that um, as I start sending more and more games to the server, then you'll see this server load in the upper corner here. That's basically how many games are basically being processed by the server. And uh, you'll see that it kind of slowly goes down here. So again, if we go to the upgrade here, and uh, you'll see that we do have an, an upgrade for the processor here. Right now we're just at a 16 core by 2.4 gigahertz. Just completely random numbers that I made up here. But um, we have this 32 by 2.8 gigahertz for $150, um, which we definitely have already. So we'll just go ahead and click that. So now you'll see that we can actually process games a little bit faster. This one's kind of uh, harder to notice, um, but you'll see that you know we can, we can actually process these games a little bit quicker and get our server load back down to zero. Um, now let me go over kind of some of the other upgrades. The uh, other cool one is the bandwidth upgrade. So you'll see that um, actually we can zoom in here and I can show you a little bit better. So you'll see that our bandwidth is kind of like only about this big. If we click on the server to upgrade the bandwidth. Uh, we'll go from just the low bandwidth to standard. And you'll see that it increases the size of how many games that we can collect. So now once we get the bandwidth upgrade, this is when we can start like really taxing the server. Um, we'll go here and especially I know there's a bunch of games in Europe that we have been completely ignoring. Uh, you'll see that a ton of these people <laughs> have been making games they haven't been hitting the servers so yeah you'll see that you know now we're just we're just really taxing the server here um so this is kind of like the main kind of premise of the game mostly it was just kind of me wanting to make something cool and interesting with the entity component system um, and i think this does a pretty good job at it um, because you see that you know we have all these uh, hundreds if not thousands of basically games kind of spawning around the world and um, they're actually being sent back to this main Ludumdare server here. Now, um, it's kind of interesting. I, I ran into a bunch of problems along the way and unfortunately was not able to submit it into the compo section. Um, I typically like to submit my games into the compo section because that's uh, kind of the more pure form of the game jam in my opinion. Basically, you have to create everything yourself within 48 hours. Um, again, you're not allowed to use any outside help or pre-made assets or anything like that. But unfortunately, when I was getting close to the 48 hour deadline, um, I didn't really have much of the gameplay in place and still had a whole bunch of art to make and I was kind of just using some placeholder stuff. Um, so I decided to just take the extra day and, you know, really just kind of polish it out. Still was doing everything myself because well, I only fly solo, as you can tell. And while the game isn't, you know, still complete, I think it's a, a pretty good tech demo and it's a, you know, fun little world to play around in. Again, I'll show you some more of these upgrades here. So the other one that I don't think I've showed off yet is the uplinks. So we can actually upgrade to have a second uplink. So you'll see that now we can kind of use this. And if we want maybe this one kind of um, grabbing things from America, and then we can have this one you know, now let's go over to India. We haven't been here already. Actually, I mean, our server load's pretty high, so let's see what happens. We might max out over at 500. Uh, you see, oh yeah, we went over 500. And um, <laughs> one of those things, I didn't really have a whole bunch of time to complete the game. I was, again, as always with these game jams, just running up to the absolute deadline, doing as much as I could. So unfortunately, the game doesn't really have any win or lose states. Um, so right now it's really just kind of, you know, going through the upgrades, playing with all the upgrades. Um, I guess you can say the win state would be to max out everything. So right now we can, um, if we max out our, or we can upgrade our server and you'll see that uh, the server is not, the server load is now increasing at a much faster rate. And um, basically you'll notice that as we're processing more of these games, then the money goes up. Uh, and that's something you may have already caught on to. Um, and that's basically how we can afford these server upgrades is by processing all these game jam games, which would be really cool um, if that's how it worked in the real world. We just, you know, maybe play games or put them on a server and collect money. Uh, but anyways, we can see the total number of games processed down in the uh, lower corner here. Again, still just kind of clicking through. Um, let's see what other upgrades might be interesting to show off. I mean, the, the bandwidth one is really fun to play around with. Now we're at high bandwidth. You'll see that um, we just have this like really cool one. 
Um, I kind of like this effect, these effects that I've created here. This is the first time that I used shader graph. It was one of the reasons that I wasn't able to finish for the compo section is because this was really the first time that I had used shader graph. And um, I was, <laughs> it's kind of a dumb idea to try and learn something like shader graph during the actual game jam itself. But um, I ended up coming up with um, just this simple little graphic here that kind of um, spins around and, and goes into the center. Um, and then we also have this like 010101 strip going all the way down. Um, just one simple little effect that I wanted to add, but I mean, I could add pretty easily, but you know, just one of the little things that I didn't have enough time for um, was to be when you uh, increase the speed, um, your, your, um, your link speed, then like I did right here, then you'll, you would see this uh, strip go a little faster. Unfortunately, I did not have enough time to do that. Um, but it is what it is. I think the effect still looks pretty cool and it basically kind of gets the message across. Um, so anyways, I think you now would probably be a good time to upgrade the server processor again. Um, so you'll see that now once we've maxed this one out, we're at the, the maximum and um, although we're sending a bunch of games to the server, it's it's processing through these pretty quickly here. So it's a little bit kind of like a management game. Um, it, it was one of those things like I, it was it was kind of tough for me to figure out what the gameplay of this game was basically going to be. Um, I kind of knew, yeah, of course I wanted it to be, you know, basically you're trying to keep the Ludum Dare server alive. So, um, you know, you're doing something to increase your money. Um, and then you can use that to pay for upgrades to the server. Um, so now let's do the 10 gigabit. It's, it's pretty cool to see how quickly the <laughs> all these little games get just shot over to the server um, as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, so it was, it's kind of challenging for me to figure out what the gameplay was actually going to be. One of the first kind of considerations that I went through was to kind of figure out the scale of the game. So I figured like I could do it I figured I could do it on many multiple scales. Like I could do it on a micro scale where there's like actual um, electrons and zeros and ones going through the server and you can kind of have to manage it that way. Um, the next kind of level up from that I thought is like if you were in the actual room with the server and you're basically playing as like the, the server administrator and um, you know, he's going around, he's like unplugging wires and plugging things in, he's popping open the server and installing new parts and stuff like that. I think that could be kind of an interesting one too. Um, the next kind of scale up from that would be to be um, like in like a warehouse where there's a bunch of servers and maybe you're kind of like running around, um, changing out drives, putting out fires, all kinds of things like that. And then of course the fourth scale, the largest scale, which is kind of what I came up with here, was um, basically a global scale. And I think this one just makes the most sense for the game that I was trying to make. Again, I wanted to show off um, the entity component system and really actually use the entity component system in kind of like an actual game setting uh, for me for the first time, uh, because up until this point, I haven't um, really made a game with it, only, only kind of tech demos or just kind of little tutorials. Of course, you'll see that uh, now we're at the extreme bandwidth and we just kind of have this huge radius that we can suck up games from all over Africa right here. Um, but again, yeah, I think this, this scale kind of made the most sense. Now, another interesting thing that I kind of came up with was how do I actually spawn these entities on the correct locations on the globe so you're not, you know, spawning things in the water and uh, we're actually spawning things on the land. And I even took it a step further where it's more likely to spawn these things in um, higher populated and more densely populated areas. So you'll see that, you know, Japan's got quite of a bunch of um, ones spawned on there. Whereas like, you know, if you go up to like Siberia, there's not as many games being spawned. And so the solution that I actually came up with, it, it's kind of a neat little trick is basically what happens is um, I kind of do like just a random ray cast to somewhere on the globe. And then I check that point against this kind of like secondary map that I made that is essentially the same shape of all the you know continents on the globe and everything. But I've color coded it for some areas to be land, some areas to be water, and then some areas to be you know more 
higher densely populated and some kind of lower densely populated areas. And so from that, it can kind of like, it, it checks the color and then depending on the color, then it determines if this is a place that it can spawn or if it should find a, another place on the globe. Um, so I might do kind of a tutorial video just showing how I actually accomplished that. I think it's a pretty, pretty neat little trick. And looks like we have one server upgrade to go um, just to get four links. I think you guys can kind of understand what that looks like. You know, basically we have uh, one, two, and three here. Uh, of course, a fourth will add a fourth. That is definitely the most challenging uh, upgrade to get. You need to get $10,000 for it. You see that I've kind of just been, you know, sitting around and we're still at only about $5,000 here. Um, but so yes, yeah, that's, that's probably the one that just like takes the most amount of time. I think when the game kind of gets to this point, you're basically just kind of like going around, um, just kind of like moving one or two of these in some of these kind of more densely populated areas. And again, because you have that link speed up so high, it shoots them off to the server almost instantly. So that's uh, kind of nice to have. Going back to kind of like win and lose conditions, um, I was thinking that, you know, maybe if you maxed out the server load, I think a really cool effect and something that would have been pretty easy to accomplish, but again, didn't have a whole lot of time for to basically just kind of like make the server explode and then have it start shooting out these little like red game things and kind of have like the camera pan around and then you'll see like all these games are like shooting way off into this galaxy out there. I think that would be pretty silly. Um, also, we get the moon in here. If I can kind of put the camera right, but yeah, we got the, we got the moon back here. Um, yeah, I think this is this is pretty much what the game is. Of course, like I mentioned, you know, we can zoom in pretty close. Um, yeah, definitely let me know if you have any questions about it and you want to learn any more about, you know, how the game was developed and some of the more challenges I went through. I think I'm going to be going, uh, doing at least one or two more videos, maybe talking about some of the, the cool technical aspects um, and things that I came across during the development of this game. Yeah, I, I definitely ran into a whole bunch of issues and making an actual game using the entity component system, I think was really important for me because um, it kind of put my skills to the test. Um, it made sure that I kind of knew what I'm talking about. It definitely taught me a bunch of things like actually using it in practice. Like there are some things that I figured out, oh, I can't do it this way or I have to do this thing this certain way. Um, but it was pretty cool because I'm kind of at the point where I was getting a, if I was getting any error messages or something like that, I realized why it was incorrect. Like, you know, maybe I didn't do it correct the first time, but I, I realized why what I was doing was incorrect after I got that error message. So it's pretty cool that I'm kind of at that point right now. Um, so anyways, we'll just go ahead and looks like I have enough for this last upgrade. So now we have everything maxed out. Just have this fourth link here and you'll see that we have about 5700 games processed and basically that is my ludum dare game jam game I, I hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you hit that like button also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos um, where i'm making games and fun stuff using the entity component system definitely let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you'd like to learn or um, for me to talk about Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, this effect that I made here where the world just kind of like materializes, this was basically achieved by doing the same thing of how I determine where the entities spawn on the globe, except basically everything is treated as equal. I basically just have water and land, and it only spawns on land. Um, of course, the spawn rate is much higher. I believe I'm spawning one entity per frame here. So just a little tidbit on that. Um, anyways, I'll let you get back to it.